And what if I wanted to create a vertical kiosk instead of a horizontal one? Hi, I'm Alessandro Scola and welcome to my channel. If you missed the previous video where I explain how to create a web kiosk using just a Raspberry Pi 4 and a touchscreen monitor, I'll leave the link above. Today I will explain five configurations that I did not cover in the previous video, and that will be very useful for creating your web kiosk. One of these, well, you can see it here, and how to create a vertical web kiosk. But now enough talk, let's get started. At the end of the previous video, we left off in this situation, a horizontal web kiosk, touch interface. But what happens if I do this? You see, the entire site is zoomed in. By doing a pinch to zoom, like on our phones, the whole site expands. The buttons become gigantic, the shapes change too, and at this point, everything becomes scrollable, both horizontally and vertically. We want to avoid this, so now I'll explain how to disable the zoom. Let's connect to our Raspberry, with putty like last time, using the username and password. Let's edit the usual file we've already seen in etc. xdg openbox.autostart. Let's go to the last line where we and then initiate the process of launching the Chromium browser. And before, the address at the end of all our various flags that we have already activated, such as disable, infobus, kiosk, here in the settings we include an additional configuration option called disable pinch to the list. We save the changes, restart the system, and observe the results. Here's Chromium, let's try to zoom, and as you can see, it no longer zooms. So step number one is successfully resolved in our setup. Another behavior we want to prevent from occurring on the device is this. Suppose I log in and open a page. If at this point I swipe from the left edge towards the center, see what happens. A little arrow appears, and if I release the touch and do it again, the browser goes back. Once more a small arrow appears, and if I release the touch again, the browser goes back. Basically, I am simply going backward in the browser. If I did the same thing on the other side, I would go forward. So in fact, even though I have deleted and hidden the forward and back buttons of the browser, the user can still operate in this way. Now I'll show you how to block this behavior. To solve the second problem, which is to prevent the possibility of navigating forward and backward through pages using swipe from the left-right edge, dragging towards the center of the screen, as we saw earlier, we also need to edit this file. The Chromium documentation says that it would be enough to add this parameter, namely overscroll history navigation equal to zero. We can leave it as is, nothing happens, but in reality, this does not work. It doesn't work, so we need to find another workaround. The workaround is this. We no longer solve it from the Raspberry configuration side, but we go directly inside the site. I open the page. In this case, I open the index which is somewhat the page that contains all the code for the kiosk. I go to the head section and paste a CSS attribute, which is this. So, style bar style in this case to open and close the section dedicated to CSS. And then I tell it that the HTML and body have this attribute, scroll behavior none. Now I just save, go back to the putty, application, reboot, and Let's see what happens. The Raspberry has rebooted. Now, to see if we have solved the problem, we still need to log in to navigate a bit through the pages. Okay, let's change the page. Let's just try that gesture again. And you see it does not work anymore. We disabled back and forward. So we have effectively solved the problem. So going back to the main page, the arrow appears, but absolutely nothing happens. Let's just move on. And although there is a page reload, it actually stays there and doesn't go anywhere. Let's finally see how to rotate our kiosk 90 degrees to the left and right. We always go to putty, to the usual auto start file, and we simply add a command in this particular area. The command is xrander, what? Space. Oh space. 
left. If we want to rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise, so to the left or right. If we want to rotate it 90 degrees clockwise, we just leave it as right, save, but. Before rebooting the kiosk, let's go back to the file we saw in the first episode, which is home username, in this case, PyBash profile, and we will re-enable the arrow. This will help me explain how the mechanism works a bit better. So we will remove the no cursor option that was used to hide the mouse pointer when you touch around the screen. So I save, this time reboot, and let's see the behavior of the Raspberry. You can already see the little arrow. I have connected a mouse here and the kiosk is rotated 90 degrees clockwise. Now, I want to point out something. The arrow still moves correctly when we use the mouse. So if I move it to the right, it goes down because that's how it would be. So to the right, to the left, there we go, right, left, perfect. However, if I click with my finger, something strange happens. The arrow no longer follows my direction, meaning the axes are inverted. So right continues to go, right when it was flipped. And now, going down to the left, the arrow goes up. So the axes of the touch screen are inverted, okay? So it's a bit difficult to use the interface this way. Therefore, what needs to be done is to rotate the XY axis of the touch screen. So let's put the screen down and go back to the PC. And to do this, we return inside PuTTY and edit another configuration file that we actually haven't seen before. So to avoid mistakes, I'll copy and call it Okay, let's go here and edit this file. USR, share x11, which is a configuration file for x11 of the graphical environment, xorg, conf, 40, libinput. Let's enter. Identify within this file the section that contains the text. Libinput, touchscreen catchall. Okay, create a space and let's paste a command there. In this case, we have rotated it 90 degrees to the right. So we are going to paste this command here. This command simply recalibrates the touch screen by inverting the axis in a way that is fundamentally. These little numbers you see here, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, vary based on the rotation you need to make. In this case, I have entered the one for rotation to the right that is 90 degrees clockwise. If you need to do it in the other direction, the numbers change, but it's always this file that needs to be modified. So I save, I restart. And let's just see what happens this particular time. So if a mouse is used, it really doesn't matter much. But if the touch screen is used, you definitely need to remember to invert the axis. So let's turn it once more and see if it works now. I honestly don't know if you might be able to tell, but the arrow actually moves correctly both from right to left and from top to bottom. I can easily click inside the field, enter the numbers, and I can click on the login button. So everything seems fine. Here, this is an example of a production KPI page for example, and everything works. So there are various menus and everything works. Let's try rotating to the left. Go back to PuTTY, reopen the uh, configuration. First, let's go to auto start and we will set it to turn left. We save, go back to the X11 configuration file, the 40 I've input and we will change the numbers. So we remove this entire line. I will leave you all the correct commands on my site. In this case, we see the rotation as a 270 degree rotation to the right. 
which is the same as saying a 90 degree rotation to the left. Ultimately, it's exactly the same thing. Let's paste these different numbers, but the command is always the same. We save and reboot. We now proceed to the Raspberry device to observe the outcomes of our actions. This time, we will direct our attention to the left side, where we anticipate a turn. As we look closely, we can already see the arrow indicating that the device has indeed turned to the left, which is exactly what we expected. This confirms that the rotation mechanism is functioning correctly, moving to the left as intended. To ensure everything is operating smoothly, we will conduct a thorough check. We start by testing the mouse, verifying its ability to move in all directions, left, right, upwards, and downwards. Additionally, we assess the touch screen functionality, confirming that it responds accurately to our inputs. As I move my finger upwards, and then downwards on the screen. I can hear the sounds coming from the left and right speakers, respectively. Next, I click inside the designated field on the screen, where I proceed to enter a number. After inputting the number, I press OK to confirm, and I am pleased to report that the system responds correctly, indicating that everything is working as it should. This comprehensive check reassures us that both the hardware and software components are in perfect harmony, delivering the expected performance without any issues. Let's see another configuration that is definitely very useful, that of setting a static network address, so a static IP. In this case, the command we need to run is sudo. I always recommend this before the actual command, nnmi, Okay, if you don't run it with sudo, you won't be able to save the changes made. Let's edit a connection. Here we select the wired network if we want to modify that, or the Wi Fi configuration if we want to modify the Wi Fi. We press enter, and we can give a different name to the configuration. I don't care. I press enter and move with the tab until the option next to automatic IPv4 configuration is highlighted. I press enter and select that I want it manual. I move with the tab to show, press enter, and I keep moving with the tab to addresses, add, enter. And here finally I can write the address I want, for example. I move with the tab to the gateway option. If you are at home, then the router's address should be entered in the gateway. And in a business, the address of the firewall. I move with the tab to DNS server, and here too I press enter and add the address, if we are at home, of the router, which corresponds to that of the gateway. Otherwise, in a business, the DNS server, depending on your configuration. I move on. I move on. If I want, I configure IPv6, but that's not my case. I proceed until OK and press enter. Once I have modified the connection, I need to activate it, so I go back to my tool, select the second option to activate a connection, press enter on the first option in this case, and it gets activated on the left. This deactivates it if I want to turn it off. Right now I don't care, so I deactivate it. OK, but it's important to do this step, otherwise it won't be configured correctly. Back and Desk. Now I will show you a solution to a problem you might have with the Raspberry. For example, if you want to change the name of the Raspberry, the device name to better identify it on the network, something happens. After changing the name, upon reboot, Chromium no longer works. Let's take a look. Let's, so let's call the utility tool sudo raspy config. Okay. We go to system configuration options. Host name. And here we had given the name Raspberry test name. If I wanted to change it for various reasons. For example, let's call it Raspberry Deprova name. We give an OK. Confirm with OK and then finish. It asks me to reboot. 
and let's see what happens to our Raspberry, now that I have changed the name. A small problem occurs. Chromium does not start. Or rather, it starts, but freezes, and shows a completely black screen. Let's see how we can resolve this. We have changed the host name of our Raspberry, and Chromium still does not start. Once again, we connect with Putty. But we could also do it directly from the Raspberry with a keyboard. Let's run this command. sudo rm rf and this path here com.config. Chromium singleton asterisk. This action will delete a whole series of Chromium configuration files that are stored on your system. We proceed to run this command and then we reboot our Raspberry Pi device to ensure that all changes take effect properly. After the reboot, let's observe and determine if we have successfully resolved the issue or not. At this point, you will notice that Chromium has restarted automatically. Now, in order to verify if the host name has actually been changed as intended, we can press the key combination Ctrl LT backspace. This will allow us to open a terminal where we can input the command host name. Upon executing this command, we observe that the host name is indeed called Raspberry Pi test, confirming that the configuration process has been successful. This indicates that the changes we made have been applied correctly, and the system is now operating with the new host name as expected. Well, the video is over, if you liked it. If you found it useful, Share it and subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time. Bye.